Hi, everyone. For those who may not know me, I'm Isa Hisi. I'm a product manager um, in the Microsoft Graph developer experience team. And I am responsible for some of our SDKs. And PowerShell, it's one of those. So we are here to talk a little bit about the new preview of PowerShell V2. We have a few changes we did. So here it's pretty much what have changed um, between V1 and V2 versions. So pretty much now we have dedicated V1 and beta modules. Uh, what that means I will show you in the next slide, but pretty much we have two different modules now. One Microsoft.graph that is targeting V1 endpoint, and now Microsoft.graph.beta module that's targeting beta uh, endpoint. This is something that we thought uh, as a really good improvement because today like it's pretty much easy to like use v1 and beta command let's in the same script and when you are like scrolling down the script today we need to change the profile when we are targeting v1 or beta and because of that it's easy to miss that you are changing profiles and maybe you are not relying as much as possible in v1 as you should because as we know beta endpoints sometimes can introduce breaking chains so we decided to split the sdk into two so to be less error prone and less ambiguous scripts because now we have the beta prefix in all beta commandlets. The other change is that we are supporting more auth scenarios. So we are now putting managed identity, client secret credentials and environment uh, variables. So managed identity, as um, some of you may know, like it's a common challenge when writing uh, and automating um, the things you need. It's a common challenge to manage the secrets, credentials, and all of that, and like have everything you need secure. So now we are eliminating the need to manage your credentials by yourself by using the managed identity, uh, because now Azure resources, um, uh, we can get access tokens from Azure resources that are protected by Azure uh, Active Directory. So more secure health scenarios, uh, same for client secret credentials, because like if you need um, interactions in the background, you don't have a user to sign in, you can use now client secret credentials. And uh, for those who may need um, to use environment variables or you need or you want to, you can now set your variables uh, pointing the client ID, uh, the tenant ID, and ask PowerShell SDK to use these environment variables to authenticate against graph. Another improvement about ALF is for the certificates, because we do now support certificate authentication, but before v2 so in v1 we only were looking at the machine certificate store but now we included the current user certificate store so both are being looked by the v2 version and if we have like the same certificate in both current user and uh, the local machine we are going to use the current user one and the other chains are HTTP2 support when the API supports HTTP2. 
and we added also the success range code support so now everything that it's 200 something we are going to be able to get this even though the api is saying for example the response will be a 202 but actually they are also respond they are also responding with like 201 200 that's not a niche anymore because like now we supported the success range code support so 200 like 2x um code um are being fully supported by the SDK and we no longer have issues with that. So just to exemplify what I told about different modules. So in V1, for you to use V1 and beta in the same command let, you would need to change your profile. So the select MD profile to V1 to use what was in V1 and for beta for the things that are in beta. And now in V2, we have the beta uh, prefix. So as you can see in the V2 code snippet here, we have the get mg beta drive activity. So this beta word was included as part of the beta module. So for those who are using only V1 endpoints, nothing had changed. Your script should be working just fine. You probably don't need to change anything. For those who are relying on beta, either because the functionality you need is not exposed in V1, or you need, or you're trying something new, some preview APIs, you just need to go and just add this little word beta um, after MG and you should be fine. Uh, the new auth scenarios here are the snippets just for you to have a quick view. So manage identity, we have now a dash identity parameter here for environment variables. As you can see here, we are using environment variables to say the client ID, the tenant ID, the client secret. And the third one is the client secret one, as you can see, uh, dash client secret credentials parameter are now one of the ways you can authenticate against graph. So now I'm going to hand it over to Peter, who is going to do a quick demo for us just to show you how it's working the PowerShell um, preview V2. All right, thanks, Miza. Um, cool. So uh, for this demo, I'll show you how you can use the module in uh, Azure Cloud Shell using managed identity. Let me share my screen here. Uh, so the first thing when using managed identity, uh, we support essentially two kinds of identities. We have a uh, system assigned and user assigned. So system assigned will automatically uh, use the managed identity of that service instance that you're running on in Azure. So like in this case, I'm using Cloud Shell. Cloud Shell ships with its own identity. So in uh, V2, all you need to do is um, in your Cloud Shell environment, just run install module, Microsoft Graph, uh, allow pre-release. So it'll be something like uh, this, and this will install the preview version of V1. If you wanted to install beta, you could also just do here dot beta, and that should install it. The cool thing with uh, Azure Cloud Shell is that everything is persisted. So even if you, you know, close your browser and open it again, the module will be installed. So uh, to use the system assigned identity, I'll just call connect MG graph that identity, and that will pick the access token from that environment. And just like that, I've logged in. And in this case, I'm using app only permissions. So there are some default permissions that the identity has. So the next thing is, you know, I can just use the uh, module as usual. So like in my next uh, sample, I'll essentially just, you know, filter uh, users in my tenant with a city specified as Redmond. Uh, so in this case, I'll get like a collection back of Redmond based users who have their um city specified as red one um then the next thing that i'll do i'll create a group 
um, M365 group for these users. Um, so in this case, I'm just specifying the display name using the new MG group command as a Redmond based users, uh, description, mail nickname, group type, and I'll say that this group is mail enabled and then I'll set security enabled to false. Um, run it. And just like that, I have a dedicated um, Redmond group uh, here that's been created. So what I'll do next is I'll iterate through those Redmond based users and add them to this uh, Redmond group that I created. Uh, to do that, I'll just use the new group member command that ships to the SDK. Um, oopsie. There we go. So in this case, I'll just loop through the users, call the new uh, MG group member, uh, specifying the group ID as that group that I just created up there. And then the directory object ID is the ID of those users who I want to add. Now, uh, why it's a directory object here, it's because a uh, member of a user is uh, any type of that derives from a directory object. So, you know, that can be a user, a group, uh, and other different types. Um, so I'll just loop through. And just like that, we've added users to our groups. Uh, so I can confirm this by calling the um, getMG group member uh, by specifying the group ID as that Redmond group that I just created. And just like that, I can see that all the IDs that I added are uh, available as members of this group. So once I'm done with my group and I can add other you know, settings for this uh, group, et cetera, and you can even convert the group to a team and do a lot more sophisticated work from uh, using the module. Uh, but in this case, I just want to keep it simple. So I'm done with my group. What I'll do next is just go and delete it. And uh, one cool thing, you can also call the module with the dash debug to see what's happening. And just like that, we can see that uh, we sent a request to that URL and uh, those were the headers and that was the response that we got back and uh, the group has been deleted. Yeah, so this just shows you how you can use, for instance, that new managed identity as an auth option that we just added for you to essentially make app only calls without worrying about certificate secrets and, you know, some certificate rotations and those kind of stuff. Um, together with this, there's a whole lot more improvements that we've made. You can find those in our, um, our migration guide here. So we talk about like, you know, what are the new uh, features and improvements that we've added, how you can use them when providing snippets uh, as to how they can be used, et cetera. So I'd urge you to just go to this upgrade guide and uh, see what's new, play with them and uh, give us feedback. And, and just to add uh, on top of what Peter was saying, uh, we are looking for feedback. So please feel free to raise issues or to go to the discussion topic we have in the PowerShell GitHub repo uh, that we are discussing pretty much why we separate the SDK and why we opt per, per uh, different command let names. So please go put your input there. We want to hear from you what you think. And uh, we pretty much want to uh, also tell you and let you know that we are working in a migration tool to help you migrate your scripts from V1 to V2. So this will be available with the GA version. So it's a in progress, but uh, that's also something that we are working on and also uh, one support. Um, so that's uh, what's coming next. That's all. Thank you, everyone. Cool. Excellent. Thank you, Maisa. Thank you, Peter. Really awesome stuff. And good to see the, the, the improvement as well. Absolutely brilliant. Mm -hmm.